Okay, in this tutorial, I want to talk about 2020 paper two, question one. In part A, we're given three different points, A, B, and C. And we're asked to get the perpendicular distance from the point A to the line BC. And then use this answer to determine the relationship between the three points. So obviously the first thing I need to do is to use the perpendicular distance formula. But I can't do that yet, because in order to use the perpendicular distance formula, it's the perpendicular distance from a point to a line. So I first need to get the equation of the line. The line in question is the line BC. So it's basically junior cert coordinate geometry. To get the equation of a line, I need to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. But in order to use this equation, I need to know the slope of the line. So the very first calculation I did was I labeled B and C as x1, y1 and x2, y2. And I subbed into the formula for the slope of a line. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And when I subbed in, I ended up with the slope is equal to minus 3 over 2. Once I've worked out the slope of BC, I'm happy enough to sub into this equation. You, the slope is minus 3 over 2, and one of the points on the line, I decided to use the point B, but I could have used the point C. The point B is 6 minus 12. So I subbed in my point and my slope, and I've simplified it down. And then when I got towards the end, I realized that I want to use the perpendicular distance formula with this line. And when using the perpendicular distance formula, you need everything on one side of the equation. So I moved everything to the left-hand side where they're all positive. If you had moved everything to the other side of the equation, you would have gotten minus 3x minus 2y minus 6 equals 0. That's sufficient as well. That's fine. But it is harder to deal with because they're all negatives. So I know the equation of BC is 3x plus 2y plus 6 equals 0. I was given the coordinates of the point A, so I'm now simply going to sub into the perpendicular distance formula and figure out what's going on. So I'm getting the perpendicular distance from this line, BC, to the point 2 minus 6. On page 19 in the maths tables, it tells me the perpendicular distance formula is here. It's AX1 plus BY1 plus C over the square root of A squared plus B squared, where A refers to the coefficient of X in the line, B refers to the coefficient of Y, and C is the constant at the end x1 is the x-coordinate, y1 is the y-coordinate. But the thing is, when you sub in all your values here, the top of the fraction ends up as a zero. If the top of a fraction is a zero, then the value of the fraction itself is zero. So the perpendicular distance from the point A to the line BC is zero. What that means is that the point A must be on the line. The distance from A to the line is zero. So the point A must be on the line BC. Now we can describe the relationship between them. Obviously, the lines, the three points A, B, and C must be on the same line. And the word we use to describe points that are all on the same line are collinear. So the three points are collinear. That's the relationship they're looking for here. Collinear simply means they're all in a straight line. Okay, question one, part B. There are two different ways of doing this question. I want to talk to you about both of them, but I want to do it the easier way. We're given the line, the equation of the line A, which is x minus 2y plus 1 equals 0. And then we're given the line B. We're not told the equation, but we know that the angle that the line makes with the positive sense of the x-axis is 60 degrees. Now, the angle between the two lines is labeled as theta. If the angle between two lines is, if you look for the angle between two lines, there's a formula for that. On page 19 in the maths tables, there's a formula to get the angle between two lines. So my first instinct when I seen this question was, right, I want to use that formula where the tan of an angle and is equal to plus or minus m1 minus m2 over 1 plus m1 times m2. In order to use the formula on page 19 in the maths tables, you need the slope of both lines. You need the slope of A and you need the slope of B. So the first thing I did was I took down the equation of the line A and I isolated the Y. Or in other words, I've rewritten the equation of the line in the form y equals mx plus c. And the slope is simply the coefficient of x, in this case, 1 over 2. So the slope of a is a half. I know that one of the slopes is a half. Now, in order to get the other slope, you should recognize, if you know the angle that the line makes with the positive sense of the x-axis, the tan of that angle is the slope. We've looked at this in coordinate geometry of the line and in the videos on differentiation. You should remember that the slope of a line, the first derivative of a line, and the tan 
of the angle that the complex number, the tan of the angle that the line makes with the positive sense of the x-axis are all the same. Theta, that's the angle, that's the angle we refer to as the argument when dealing with complex numbers in polar form. And it's the angle we look for in that whole section on the unit circle. It comes up again and again. The point I'm trying to make here is that if I want the slope of B, then I, I know the angle that B makes with the positive sense of the x-axis is 60 degrees. So I can say that the slope of B is equal to the tan of 60. And now, if I just plug tan 60 into my calculator, I'll get the slope. If you plug it into your calculator, the slope of B, this tan of 60, is root 3. So I know the slope of B is the square root of 3. I know the slope of A is a half. So now I have two different slopes. I could use the formula for the angle between two lines, and I could work out the acute angle theta. However, there's a way easier way of doing this question, so I actually don't want to do it like that. I've just said that the slope is equal to tan of the angle that the line makes with the positive sense of the x-axis. So let's look at the line A. The angle that this line makes with the positive sense of the x-axis is here. I notice that this angle is 60 degrees, so that means that this one must be 120 degrees. What I want to do now, the easiest way to do this question, is to take this triangle and simply fill in all of the angles. I can work out what this angle is. This angle is the, is, this is the angle that the line A makes with the positive sense of the x-axis, which means whatever the slope of the line A is, the slope is going to be equal to the tan of that angle. I can work out that angle because I know the slope of A is a half. I can say that the slope of A is a half, which means I can work out the angle that it makes with the x-axis. If tan A is equal to a half, in order to get A on its own, it would be tan inverse of a half. Now, if you plug that into your calculator, your answer works out as 26.565 degrees. So I can now say that the angle here, this angle must be 26.565. Let's now again focus on the triangle from here to here to here. There are three angles in a triangle that always add up to 180 degrees. I know that this angle is 120 degrees. I've worked out that the angle that the line A makes with the positive sense of the x-axis is 26.565. So if I simply get 180 degrees and I subtract 120 and I subtract this value, that tells me the third angle in this triangle is 33.435 degrees. This one, this one, and this one now, they add up to 180 degrees. And you should recognize that the angle I'm after finding here is vertically opposite the angle that I'm actually trying to find. If this angle is 33.435, then my final answer for theta is 33.435 degrees. Again, you didn't necessarily have to do it like that, and I think for most students, the first thing that would have came into your head is using that formula from coordinate geometry, getting the angle between two lines. And if you did it like that, then that's fine, as long as you get the same answer as me. It's just this method seems to be a little bit easier to do, and it's a little bit quicker.